the collapse of the Soviet Union freed over two million Russian Jews to immigrate. Settling primarily in Israel and America, these immigrés brought with them a strong education in the math and sciences, a drive to excel in a new world, and little else. Among them were Anessa and Victor Rifkin, two mechanical engineers who emigrated to Boston, Massachusetts in 1988. Shortly after immigrating, Anessa and Victor noticed the significant gap between the mathematics education in American public schools and the one they themselves received. Teamed with educator Irina Havinson and bolstered by their community, they set out to change the face of mathematics education in the country. This is their story. means do stuff that's impossible, like can lift things up and like superheroes do and stuff. We came to America, my parents, like all parents, got different professions, so they looked at what choices fit them best and became engineers. And my sister and I were settled you know, in the life of kindergarten, education, so on and so forth. Every couple of days, every day for family dinner, we talked a little bit, but by and large, my parents were focused on work. They had professions to build, they had careers to make. They needed to build a life, so we needed to buy a house, we needed to buy a car. There were very real obstacles. And my sister and I worked on, you know, friends, education, and those things didn't intersect very much. The reason my parents were able to build careers, of course, is that they received a sterling education in Russia. One of the things the Soviet Union did very, very well is that they taught people math and science. With very poor, broken English, my parents were able to become engineers, become computer scientists, you know, which were great jobs. And roughly, you know, I think it was seventh grade, uh, my parents started noticing that, you know, my grades weren't great. I thought they were fine. I was a C student, which to me said, you know, I am average, which in America, average is, is fine. Of course, I started to pay attention to his homeworks, and I started to do homework with him, and I figured out that very quickly that there is no any knowledge in anything. It basically very good learning skills. Everything done for the next test doesn't matter. B is great. If it's B minus, it's also good. C plus, okay. But A, who cares? It's good enough. Good enough, average. Nobody is going to be excellent. Nobody is going to be outstanding. Those words were not even in his vocabulary. And of course, for me, I mean, I'm graduate of mathematical school in Minsk, and I mean. For us, being a Jew in the Soviet Union, I mean, of course we were required by our parents to be outstanding in everything. And here I have the son who is, in my opinion, less than average performance. I started to get angry and angry, and of course we started to fight with my husband, as always. I mean, if her wife is angry, what's going on at home? But then someday, I got a call from Ilya to my work, and Ilya was completely happy. His teacher, according to his work, gave him those two fractions to add that had different denominator. And in Ilya's opinion, it was impossible to add two fractions with different denominator. I couldn't even finish this talk. Phone call. I hang up, I call Victor, and I said, Victor, I can't stand it. Victor being like normal, real man, he couldn't understand my problem, so his joke, his joke was very good. He said, you know what, I can make you another one. 
don't worry. <laughs> he hung up on me. So this moment was really a turning point in my life. For me, I started to think, why did we emigrate? I mean, come back six years back. Why did I emigrate? I don't think that I immigrated for myself. I mean, granted, I didn't like the country. Granted, I knew exactly what was country about. But at 34, to leave everything at 32, to leave everything that you have and start new, it wasn't that much for me. It was for my kids. And okay, my kids are here in the free world. And according to my standard, they are losers because they are not even close where they would be if we would stay in Russia, if we would stay in Minsk, and they would go to my school number 50. Ilya would be well read, he would be very good in math, very good in science, his interest would be completely different, and he would be driven kid by his age. So for me, all this idea of immigration for our kids came to test in my mind. It didn't work. It suddenly didn't make any sense to me. I don't want Russia Basco to end. And then I started to think about it. What happened? I played by the rules. I bought house in very good suburb. I sent him in the best, one of the best school districts in the uh, United States. Why he was never challenged enough? Why he was never told that whatever he is doing is not satisfactory, that he can do better? And I started to think that it's mass culture that fights against me, that it's not just my son. And I can lose him to this mass culture exactly the same way I could lose him in Russia to communist propaganda. It's different kind of propaganda, but again, it's propaganda. So when I started to think about this, and when I understood that we immigrants who came here, we came here with nothing. We really came here with nothing. It's not like a story. We had 90 bucks per person. We have two suitcases per person. We had nothing. And now look at us, we all have houses, we all have works, we all have cars, we all have vacations. We have our life, why? Because we were well educated. If we don't transfer, which is not less important, our values for them, our drive for excellence, our responsibilities, uh, sense of responsibilities, our sense of purpose, if we don't transfer this to next generation, why did we even bother of having children? Why should we have them if they are not going to be our children? And then something funny happened with my youngest daughter because she started to resist and she was only in fifth grade. And once she told me, Mom, you know what? I think you are mistaken. I think you don't understand American culture. Look at me. I am very good looking. I don't have to know mathematics. I was shocked. I look at her and first thing that came to my mind, Masha, am I ugly? And she looked at me and she, she didn't know what to answer. And for me, it was the beginning, next beginning. I called my husband one day and I told, you know, Vita, I think I am ready to quit. Victor's reaction was just unbelievable. He said, absolutely. What do we have to lose? In February, I quit my job and I started to work uh, full-time for RSM, work full-time for RSM. When salary was written on the paper, nobody could pay me yet. So we were basically written what RSM would owe me, when and if money will come. Of course, we charge tuition, but it was so many expenses immediately that it couldn't even uh, cover my salary. So basically our family came back to six years prior. Nobody started Russian School of Mathematics with thinking, oh my God, it's going to be in 15 years, we will have 6,000 students. It will be huge business. It will be huge school. We all had children and our thoughts was only about our children. Irina, on the other hand, she was professional teacher and 
not only a professional teacher, she was a real teacher. She had passion for teaching. When she saw our kids who were eager to learn, she couldn't resist to it. I mean, it was what she was born to do. She was born to teach kids. And here in America, she was suddenly forced with choice. Does she want very nice life of comfort or this uncertain life but she will do what she was born to do. Our vision was we always knew what kind of mass education we want to provide to our children. When do we want to start? How do we, where, when, where we, we want to end up? We always knew what we are going to build, but from money point of view, how much money it will take, we never even thought of those terms. I mean, how much time it will take, it took all of our 15 years, like all of our life for me and Irina, being immigrant, speaking English the way I speak even now, and being in 50s, and deciding to do fresh start with your life, it takes real courage. It takes real courage. It takes not even vision, it takes heart. I think it takes heart. And I think the reason the school succeeded because all the time when money was a question, we didn't think twice. We took equity loan from our house twice or three times. Nobody even thought that we can collapse. My husband, his, took on, his take on this always was so optimistic. He always said, you know, what do we have to lose? In Russia, we had two bedroom apartment, two rooms apartment in America. We will have any time. It doesn't matter how much we are going to make. So we have not, we really have nothing to lose. But nobody thought about it. It was so much fun. Suddenly, life, life had purpose. Life had, life had purpose again. Everybody was very, very excited. It's some kind of euphoria. It's some kind of happiness that was the all, all people, Lifshins, Irina, me, Victor, all people around the school, we were so happy. Kids were storming into my house. I mean, house became classroom. Irina rented place for her classroom someplace. Alex Lifshin in his apartment had class. I mean, suddenly it was like movement and everybody was so much involved, and it was really huge enthusiasm. It's kind of like a regular school. You can like talk to other people, and it's not like, it's just about math, you know, there's also some socializing in it. So I could like um, learn about, learn like about other people and just make friends. Whereas all the other programs I went to, like there was no socializing or anything, it was just absolute complete math. Of course, my parents were very odd, being immigrants. They wanted me to be have only A's, but you know, they, they weren't well adjusted to America. I figured they were just kind of odd. They sat me down at some point and said, son, really, I mean, a, a C minus, uh, what's going on? And I said, well, dad, this is math, it's just hard. Well, explain it to me, what, what's hard? And I said, well, look at this problem. They want me to add one half and one fourth. It doesn't even make any sense. They're different fractions. It's like adding an apple and a pear. I don't know. You get a little bit of both. I, how am I supposed to solve this? And uh, my parents were always very subtle you know, people. They walked out of the room, closed the door, and in very loud voices said, y you think he's retarded? Do, do you think we should have him diagnosed? And they said, no, no, I, I think in America, not understanding math doesn't automatically mean retarded. He, he may just need you know, being educated. Let, let's give a few things a try before we totally give up. So you know, they started taking me to tutors many, many different kinds of tutors. High caliber tutors, you know, older Russian men that wrote textbooks. But somehow the dynamic just wasn't there. You're sitting one-on-one -on -one with this person. It's boring. It's exactly like learning Greek. So we went through many of them. Uh, we went to SAT course. And then uh, something very interesting happened. One uh, tutor, one instructor uh, said, you know what? I was a teacher in Russia. This isn't the way to do it. I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to take a 
number of kids together, and I'm not going to follow the textbook uh, that is in their school. I'm going to try writing my own. And it was like magic. Something just clicked. It was uh, the difference between learning it on your own and having a bunch of other kids in class with you whose parents were just as crazy as your parents. They also had these funny notions like everyone should know math. Math isn't, you know, you know English, you know math. There's just basic requirements to your life. You can, you can do uh, this, there's nothing complicated about it. And they had expectations like, you should work really, really hard and you should try to go for the A. And it's really important to work really hard in everything you do. It was not a place where kid, parents dropped us off. It was the first time when we started realizing our parents actually know math. And you know that's actually quite helpful because these problems are really hard. And the, the teacher had great humor. He made the material very accessible, very fun, and very social. Even in school, and it wasn't, there was a smaller class, but it wasn't even the class size. It was the fact that the teacher really connected to every student and the social element of the class, we were together all the time. We just kept, you know, we got 20 problems to take home and each problem would take two hours. You'd have to work together. You'd have to ask your parents. It forced a behavior of, work, uh, of group dynamics. And on top of that, our parents very quickly introduced a, a social element. So we started having class outings. We started a camping trip at the end of the year. They wove in the nature around this class a sense of community that a single child has no reason to excel in mathematics when society doesn't say it's important. But a community of kids who say, this stuff matters and there's a social element around it where this stuff actually is fun once you put in the hard work. It became magical. And uh, my mom was probably one of the first people to see the potential of it. You didn't have to be a genius. You just had to put in hard work. And that was the original inception. Uh, my mom partnered with Irina Havinson, who uh, was also just a brilliant teacher from Russia, who knew that math couldn't be taught in one year. I was the boot camp. You know, I came in seventh, eighth grade. They piled as much mathematics as they could to me. But my sister was, you know, right behind. She came in, you know, second grade. There they laid out, you know, a very, a much easier to adapt program so that by the time she was in ninth, 10th grade, teacher in the school was a parent. It's really hard to teach your own uh, kids, unless of course their friends are right there. In which case you're not thinking, well, that's my mom. Why am I listening to her? You're thinking she's the teacher. They didn't feel like they were, you know, crazy. And around that developed, you know, the healthy, you know, hard work equals reward. That's the message that was underlying everything at the beginning, that hard work is valued in academic circles. Well, if I'm going to get a job, then how else am I going to get a job? I have to be smart to do it. So Emil, this is great. Look, 2x minus 24 equals 10. Now what you do? You have to, what do you do next? Everyone knows that uh, a lot of in our life depends on the teacher. It depends on your first teacher and how you like one or another subject. You like literature because you have the best literature teacher. You like math because you have the best teacher. So this is why we really like when kids start with us early in elementary school because we do have great teachers and when our kids set framework for how kids will learn math all their life how they like it how they see it we do start algebra from elementary school and you start algebra from elementary school because algebra is a language and like any language the earlier to start the better you will be with this language the less accent you will have so the, our kids really learn to think to have abstract thinking from first grade. We do have very challenging curriculum. It's not very easy to teach at RSM. So that's why we really hire the best teachers that we can find. And we pay a lot of attention and spend a lot of time for training. We start our new teachers, our young teachers start from scheduling, for scheduling more experienced teachers. We do have mentor teachers who really work with every new teacher. We do have explanation of every lesson, so they do have their teacher's edition of the same lessons. So we, we want to be sure that every teacher who's in the classrooms gets the same quality like was when we started school and only me and Ina 
was teaching. So this is our main goal. For young teacher, the first year they work in as a shadow teacher. So they actually working with me or with somebody who more experience in the same classrooms. So this is they learn how to do it. More experienced teacher, they just go through our seminars. We do have a lot of trainings, and they do have uh, they do have mentor teacher as a mentor who working with them. They prepare, they help to prepare lessons, and so on. So the teachers actually one of the three key components of the success of RSM. Great curriculum, great teachers, and success of our kids. And we measure success of our, our success by success of our kids. Today, I'd like to compare you to international students, okay? So when I was your age back in Russia, it was two textbook that was used for the very bright kids. And I think that you are very strong class. And I would like you to see it yourself. I would like you to understand where you are in terms of others, international students of your age. So let's start with a very small problem. For us, education means everything. And every time when I listen to news, I mean, forget about all division in society. Education, this is true divider. If kid is not educated, kid doesn't have chance in this life. But even if kid is educated, but does not have drive, his change chances are much lower. Because education is one thing, but ability to stay the course, ability to go after what you are going to achieve, ability to stay on the road. But what we are going to achieve without drive? Okay, we need education, we need to put our mind in order, but we need will. Nobody cancel normal human will, and this will comes with rigorous training as well. And therefore, coming back to RSM, coming back to our way of teaching, that's why class is so important. That's why tutoring doesn't work. Other kids who are with you together from elementary school, you know them, you are comfortable with them, but you are competing against them. This is how you develop your will. And RSM just separated people who see the world this way from the rest of the people. And that's why we don't need any marketing. Parents are looking for something like that and they're finding us. To be a winner, it's good in studies. Um, it'll help me when later in life I get, when I'm a winner, I get more money and all that. For me, New York has always kind of symbolized what America is. Um, if you look at the skyline, I mean, that all started just with potential, and now it's just the symbol of, of striking success. And I think that it's the same for the people. I think a lot of my friends, a lot of our some alumni went there to kind of discover and develop their potential. Um, so, I mean, right now they're in every industry from, you know, they're getting their PhDs in science, to law, to finance, to we even have some stand-up comedians. And New York is kind of the place that they go to, to really figure out what they're, what they're made of to really kind of develop their full potential. Because if you look at the city, I mean, there used to be nothing, and now it's an example of what can be created with just, you know, the raw ability of man. And I think that's the same for them, just taking the raw abilities that they've developed over years, you know, mostly in thanks to RSM, I think, and to really create something of that in varied industries, because those abilities are not just geared toward, toward one industry or toward one field. <laughs> so 
So the friends that I'm gonna see today, I grew up with them in RSM camp. There's a lot of uh, different people, a lot of different personalities. Um, Pete and Goffy, as we call him, his name's Ilya Goffstein, but we call him Goffy. In camp, they would always kind of do the funny skits and um, a lot of the things that they came up with when they were 13, the campers now, who don't even know who they are, but will still remember the skits and will model their skits after them. Pete went to UPenn and then went to Harvard Law, and I was working as a lawyer in New York, and Goffy went to Brown, and now he's working at a, uh, at a hedge fund in New York, and uh, they both actually run a comedy show together called Beautiful Comedy. We're also gonna see Dina and Rima, who are kind of our your scientists. Uh, Rima's getting a PhD and Dean and I actually studied abroad in Israel together which was a great time. Mike and Sasha also both from RSM. Mike I believe also works in finance. Sasha also in finance. Sasha actually just got into business school. She's gonna be going to Dartmouth School of Business. Eugene who went to camp with us. I believe he's working as an engineer downtown. He was a year younger but that kind of you know shows the example of all these different ages of people who are close and I think I think that's basically, I think that's the whole group. RSM now, the more American I feel, because it's filled by people who want to take advantage of every opportunity America offers. And it, the more sort of I look at RSM graduates who, who have risen, risen so tr uh, tremendously in this country, that the, the more sort of patriotism I feel for America, where you can do anything. You, you know, if, if, you, if you push yourself, there are no limits. And it's, it's amazing to be in a country that, that offers that. RSM is now filled with you know, many different immigrant communities and Americans. Uh, and all of them sort of have the same common goal of, of going as far as they can. In America, it's very fashionable to ask, what is your hobby? So RSM is my profession, RSM is my hobby, RSM is my life. All of my life around RSM, like all of my friends around RSM, all of my children's friends around RSM, our vacations, everything. So it's more than, I cannot call it a business. Even when I say from business point of view, something can be, so it's not a business, it's a school. But then it's not even a school. Yes, it's a school. It's a very good, rigorous school with very good education. Very good curriculum department, very good teachers. But then it's a passion, it's a movement of parents who really driven to give their kids the best. And I'm so glad that we were actually able to build it. And then we call the school Russian School of Mathematics. And a lot of people think that this is for Russians. No, it's really from Russia with math because we took what Soviets did the best. They taught us mathematics. We had very, very good math and science. We took and we brought it to free world.
Beijinho.